Good afternoon. I'm here to do a math refresher. I was reading through some of the problems this week and realized it's been a minute since we've done some of these topics. So I'm going to kind of go over and refresh your memory on how to do some rounding and how to do some time on a number line that we did, oh, it's been a while back. So I'm gonna do that and then kind of also, I'm going to go through the steps that we use to solve a word problem. So without further ado, I'm gonna switch over to share my screen with you so you can see exactly what I'm doing and where we're going. All right, let me present this guy. So we're gonna start off with tips. Tips is the strategy we use to kind of think our way through a word problem. So we start with think. Think is starting after you read the problem. Think about what the problem is asking you, what's happening in the problem, and you're gonna kind of, I always say close your eyes and picture the story. Once you know the who, what, when, where, you can figure out the math. So that's the first thing, think about what the problem is asking or telling you. The second step is I, identify the math that you might need to know to do this problem or identify the important numbers. So then your third step will be to plan. Do you need to add, subtract, multiply, or divide, or do another math operation? And then lastly is once you have your plan, you're gonna S, solve, solve and show your work. So these are kind of the steps you need to take to think yourselves through a math word problem. So now let's switch over to our first word problem. All right, so here's the problem. Molly does homework. She reads for 17 minutes, does math for 14 minutes, and practices spelling for 15 minutes. Molly wants to watch a TV show that starts at 4.30 p.m. If Molly starts her homework at 4 o'clock p.m., can she watch her show? Explain your reasoning. So this is a problem that is involving telling time. So you need to stop and think. So what is this problem asking me? Well, I see a lot about minutes, and it's wanting me to decide whether she can watch a show if she starts watching at four o'clock. So I have to kind of start thinking about telling time and how, how to go about that. So identify. The first thing is, is I'm gonna write down on my board some key math things that I saw in this problem. So 17 minutes was important, how long she reads. Then she does, let's see, math was 14 minutes. Then she practices spelling for 15 minutes. So those are our important things. Then I also read on down that she starts at four o'clock. And I know the show is gonna be at 4.30. And I wanna figure out, will she get there or not? So now I'm gonna switch it over to a view of my whiteboard so you can see how I'm working this out. All right, so here is my whiteboard and the little notes I made to be able to see the problem. So 17 minutes was how long she spent reading, 14 minutes was how long she spent on math, and 15 minutes was how long she spent on spelling. And then here's our start time. And this is our show time. Hold on one second. My cat is driving me crazy today. She was scratching to get into the room because I shut her out of it. All right, so I'm back. Hopefully you're caught up to kind of where I'm at with this problem. So when we're working with telling time, we want to be thinking in a number line. That's the strategy we used way back when we did this. So I'm gonna start with my number line here. 
Now, this one is moving forward in time. So I have a start point. So I know I want to go forward from that start point. If it would have said she ended, then I would know that I would need to start over here at an end time and not a start time. And when I started an end time, remember, I'm going to work backwards because I want to go backwards. So, but today on this problem, we're working forwards because she starts at four o'clock. So I'm going to put four o'clock on my number line. Okay. Then I'm going to look at my reading time right here. She reads for 17 minutes. Well, I'm going to make a mark and I'm going to have 17 minutes. And if it starts at four o'clock and goes 17 minutes, then I am done reading at 4.17, okay? Then, now this 14 minutes, I wanna break that apart to be able to easily add that on my number line. So I'm gonna put an R over here because this is how much time she did reading. Well, I know if I go, let's see, four more minutes, because of the 14, I have one and four. So four more minutes, I'm at four. Count up from 17. So 17, you can use your fingers, 18, 19, 20, 21. So now I'm at 21 minutes. But I, I did the four, but now I need to do the 10 more minutes. And that's pretty easy. So I'm at 421, 10 more minutes would be 431. So I went 10 more minutes. This whole jump was my math time, okay? But now she also has reading to do. I'm gonna use that straight, same strategy and break my reading time into 10 minutes and five minutes to make 15, 10 and five makes 15. So, cause it's just easier to chunk it down small times so I can add it a little easier with timing. So 431 plus five more minutes, here's my five, is 436. And then I go a 10 more minute window. And it is now 446 when I finish my homework. This chunk was for spelling. So if she ends, at 4.46, will she be done in time to watch her show? And the answer is no. She will finish at 4.46, period. So that is kind of how, if you remember to put your time onto a number line. Now I'm gonna remind you, we were skip counting or going forward in our time. If you were to need to go backwards in your time, you can start at an end time and move backwards with your skip counts. Remember also, you can chunk your numbers apart. I chunked the 15 into a 10 and a five. Then I chunked the 14 into a 10 and a four. I could have done that with the 17, but it was already easy to add 17 to four o'clock because I had two zeros here. So this is kind of a refresher on how to put your time onto a number line to use that strategy, okay? There is going to be another problem in your work this week that is using a number line as a strategy or um, counting forward or going backwards with your time. So that's a perfect example. All right, so that was our first problem I kind of wanted to do a refresher on. Now let's look at another problem. So Tim fills beakers with 248 milliliters of water. How many milliliters of water are in two beakers? Estimate to the nearest 10 milliliter and 100 milliliter, which gives a closer estimate. 
Okay, so the first problem dealt with time. Now we're fast forwarding to estimating with measurement. So we did this also a while ago, so I'm going to kind of remind you. Now, with tips, think about the math that you see. Well, I see that Tim fills the beakers with 248 milliliters of water. And he does that into two beakers. Okay, getting my notes written down for when we switch views. Then I see the word estimate, and estimate reminds me that I need to round, and it wants me to go to the nearest 10 and the nearest 100. Kind of wrote that on my board as well. All right, so let's switch over to see my board. All right, so we have this right here, Tim has 248 milliliters and he puts that into two beakers. It wants us to round to the nearest 10 or the nearest 100 to figure out which is more accurate. So let's start with rounding to the tens place first. If I start with the number 248, I'm gonna just use this number up here. Your first thing you need to ask yourself is what digit is in the tens place? And if you remember, we have ones, tens, hundreds. So the four is in the tens place, okay? Now, remember when we did the rounding, we used a vertical number line. So here's what my vertical number line is going to look like. So we're rounding to 10. So if I have 248, Ask yourself, what is the bottom 10? Well, the bottom 10 would be 240. Then what's the top 10? 250. Halfway, 245. So remember, bottom 10, top 10, top 10, halfway on a vertical number line. So if I have 248, is that going to be above or below our halfway point? Well, if this is 45, 48 is going to go above. It would probably be somewhere right in here, 248. So when we have 248 above the halfway, it rounds up to, that's right, 250. Now here is where we rounded to the nearest tens. Okay, so now let's round to the nearest hundred using the same strategy. Have our vertical number line. So we're rounding two hundreds this time now. So let's look at this number. Let me erase those off. We have 248. We have what digit in the hundreds place, and that would be a two. So when we think this, now we're gonna think bottom hundred, top hundred, halfway, okay? So our bottom hundred is going to be 200, top hundred, 300, halfway, 350. Okay, now we need to find where 248 is on this number line. Well, 248 is not past 50, it'd probably be right in here. Squeeze it in there, 248. So this is now below our halfway mark, so it's going to round down to 200. So here for the hundreds, we rounded to 200 milliliters. I'll put hundreds right here. But if you remember, it said he had two beakers. So to find the total, we need to add these twice, two of them, because he filled them both the exact same amount. And then we're gonna compare that to what it would have actually been and see which way got us the more accurate estimate. 
So we have over here, we have 250 plus 250. Zero plus zero is zero. Five plus five is 10. Regroup and carry the one over. Two plus one is three. Three plus two more is five. So here he had 200 and or 500 milliliters when he rounded to the tens place. Now let's do that for the hundreds. This should go a little quicker because we're just adding hundreds. Zero plus zero is zero. Zero plus zero is zero. Two plus two, what's the answer? That's right, it's four. So over here he had 400 milliliters. Now, we're gonna compare that to what he would have actually had to see which one of these estimates is going to be closer. So let's add 248 plus 248. Eight plus eight is 16. We have a lot of doubles here. Regroup, write your six down, regroup your one. Well, if I know that four plus four is a Double is eight, eight plus one more is nine. Then I have another double here, two plus two is four. So we have 496 as the total amount of milliliters he had in both of his beakers. Is that going to be closer to 500 or closer to 400? Even though there is a four in the hundreds place, 96, if I was to do a vertical um, number line, 96 is going to get me closer to 500. So the final question was, which gives you the more accurate estimate? Well, if you remember, the smaller thing you round to is the more precise measurement. So this almost got to exactly the number rounding to the tens. So my answer would be rounding. to the nearest ends was, I'm gonna run out of room, the closest. So hopefully that kind of refreshes you on rounding. When you're rounding, depending on if you're rounding to the tens place or the hundreds, remember you think bottom 10, top 10, halfway, bottom 100, top 100, halfway. So hopefully this is a good little refresher to kind of remind you on how to do rounding, how to look at your number and round your bottom to the 50 or down to the tens or up to the tens and your halfway point. So let's look at the last problem I have for us today. Get this erased really good. Really happy I brought home Elmo and a marker board because that's my life. I love marker boards. Okay, so let's go back to our problems. So which estimate was closer? Remember, rounding to the tens will always get you to the nearest estimate. All right, oh, Carrie, good Carrie here. Carrie planted flowers outside for 20 minutes and then watered for 12 minutes. She finished at 4.40 p.m. What time did she go outside? Okay, so stop and think. T, what math or um, what is happening in this problem? So first, I see this, this girl, Carrie. She must love planting flowers. Hardy, hardy, hardy. <laughs> And she's out there planting flowers for 20 minutes, and then she waters them for two minutes. She comes inside at 540, but I want to know what time she started. Okay, so I identify important numbers. So 20 minutes was important. 12 minutes was important. That was how long she watered. I'm going to put a W for water. And a P for plant. And then she finished, I'm gonna write down finished at 
540. And my question wants to know when did she start officially go outside, okay? So let's look back over to my whiteboard to kind of make a plan, P, plan. My plan is gonna to be to use that same strategy as before to use a number line. But this time I'm gonna be coming backwards. I'm gonna be subtracting basically. So that's my plan. So now let's get over to do the final step of tips and that is to solve. So let's switch it over here. All right, so here's my notes at the top, kind of sloppy, but that's how I work since I can't show you the problem and do this at the same time. So planted for 20 minutes, watered for 12, and she finished at 540. I've already decided I want to use the strategy of a number line. So I'm going to draw out my number line here. Now, I know when she finishes, but I don't know when she starts. So this is where my question mark is going to go. And I do know that she finishes at 540. Okay. Now I have to think backwards. So she, let's start with watering. Or maybe let's do planting. We'll start with the first thing that she does. She plants for how long? 20 minutes. 20 is an easy number because it's already a round number to kind of think backwards. So if I go a skip 20 minutes back from 540, I would be at, think back, 540. Count, you could just, you could break this apart into tens, 530, 520, if I skip counted back by tens, if I broke that 20 apart. So that puts me at 520. Greta is right here, by the way. <laughs> she's driving me crazy. Oh, she's wor worse than chatty children. Okay, so do you see how I did that to get 540? I went ahead and thought about 10 as, or 20 as 10 plus 10, and I just skip counted back by 10, okay? Now let's look at the 12 minutes. It would be easier if we broke those two numbers apart. So I can do a set of 10 and then two. 10 and two is 12. So let's do the 10, that's easy to go back. So here's our big jump. I go back 10 more minutes. So 10 minutes back from 520 would put me at 510. Now I need to count back two more minutes. If you want to, you could just do little tally marks. That is another strategy we use. So I have two tally marks. So 510, then I have 5. Let me write it down here. 509, and then I go back one more to 508. So what start time did she start at? 508. So my answer to the question is she went outside at 508. Oh, eight. All right, don't forget your period. So we followed tips. We also unknowingly have already done the read, draw, write. We read the problem. We draw, drew a number line and we using our number line, we skip counted so that we could then write the answer. So that is just kind of a quick refresher on some problems and topics on how to kind of attack these. Let me switch you back to me. Oops. There we go. All right. Hi, I'm back. Okay. So hopefully this kind of refreshed some things, how to use a number line, how to round again, um, cause we, it's been a little, a minute or so more than a minute. That's an under exaggeration. Um, a few months since we've done any estimating or rounding. So it's natural to me, kind of a refresher. 
So remember on rounding, you're starting, if you're doing tens, bottom 10, top 10, halfway. And then if you're doing hundreds, bottom 100, top 100, halfway. Once you kind of get that down again, you'll be able to round super quick. And remember, anytime that you are rounding, if you're going to be wanting to know what will get you the most precise estimate, it's always going to be rounding to the lowest place value. So that's usually the tens. Now for telling time, one of the best strategies is to tell time using that flat horizontal number line and thinking in chunks of time moving forward. You can do chunks of fives, tens, whatever it's easiest to skip count by, that will help you to kind of be able to picture it on a number line. And remember, if you know the start time, but not the end time, you're gonna count forward. If you know the end time, but not the start time, you're gonna be counting backwards. So that'll kind of help your mind think forwards and backwards, which is the biggest reason why we work on skip counting forward and backwards, because you have to think that way in math, not just always forward, you also think backwards. So. Hopefully this video helped out. I will kind of start looking over the math problems and seeing what comes into me over the next couple of, of days whenever I post a new week. Um, I've had some people miss because they were trying to do some fancy stuff and I think helping show them how to refresh and to how to do rounding and how to do using the number line to, to tell time, that will kind of get your brain back into that um, memory of math because it it does go away if we, we don't use it as often. There's lots of naps and sleeps that have happened in between there and now. So hopefully this helps. I'll keep checking in on your work. And as usual, Greta will probably keep joining us on videos. She's rubbing all over my legs. Cat hair is flying. So she's just needing a lot of attention today, evidently. Who knows? Well, if you need anything else, even more than this refresher, just let me know and I will share with you. So I hope you have a great, great day. And remember, always here to help. So shoot me, have your mom or dad shoot me an email saying, help, they're confused. And I will make however many more videos we need to make to kind of remember how to do the math. So remember my job's to get you ready for fourth grade and that is what I hope to do. So have a good rest of your afternoon. I will talk to you later.